Good afternoon and welcome to the Luxembourg PVC Stories with today Gilles Mougenot from Argos with you. Hi Gilles, how Hello. are you and where are you today? Hello everyone, I'm fine. I'm in Brussels. You cannot see the beautiful blue sky behind me, but uh, great weather, great time. Let's start then, Gilles. What can you tell us about Argos? How, when, and who started this whole adventure? Before Argos, I was uh, I joined uh, Initiative Finance, who was which was one of the pioneers in the LBOs market in France in 1985, and I tried to uh, organize. Uh, my MBO on Initiative Finance, uh, I failed, and then I, I took the decisions to, uh, to set up my own organizations. Uh, and I met uh, Maurice Dweck, uh, so Maurice Dweck was a founder of Soditic, uh, so a bank and asset manager in Geneva, so that's why the name, uh, original name of uh, Argos was Argos Soditic, and we moved to Argos with you a few years ago. And we, we launched uh, in 1989 with uh, two partners. Uh, one, uh, unfortunately, uh, died a few years after and one left. So I'm the, the remaining uh, founder of the group. And the strategy uh, uh, was really to uh, set up uh, a pan-European uh, investment group. So Initiative et Finance was more or less a pure, pure French player. Um, and also with uh, an entrepreneurial uh, mindset. Uh, and since then, so after 30 years, uh, we have managed uh, 80 transactions. Uh, we have six different offices, so Geneva, Milan, Paris, Brussels, Frankfurt, and Luxembourg for sure. And we are coverage eight countries and we are currently managing 1.2 billion uh, euros uh, funded by uh, international first-class investors. Thank you, Gilles, for this introduction. And don't be worried. We love the explorers, the pioneers, specifically when they have great stories to tell. And no else. <laughs> and no uh, if we could uh, summarize now, um, Argos main activity. You touched upon a few points, but also what's your core philosophy? It was not uh, uh, determined at the beginning, but uh, in year 2000, we, we, we did a, a, a deep analysis about our deal flow, uh, competences, and return. And we took the decisions to, uh, first of all, uh, uh, concentrate our investment in majority investments in SMEs uh, with strong fundamentals, but facing uh, complex situations. So complex situations is covering a lot of different situations. So MBI, uh, opposed to MBO, uh, carve-out, spin-off, asset arbitrage, shareholders dispute, privatizations, P2P. Uh, and in, uh, in that perspective, um, we bring our complexity expertise with a rigorous approach uh, to value creations. And we have, in a nutshell, uh, uh, defined our strategy, which is by complexity, uh, sell simplicity. And behind that, our core philosophy is really uh, uh, entrepreneurial, uh, business-minded, transparent, reliable, truly European, um, uh, really oriented to uh, human capital and people, close to management teams, and uh, uh, again, true majority shareholders and prudent leverage approach. Why? Because uh, when you are dealing with complex situations, the, uh, the, the, the situation is not easy to leverage. And we believe that uh, uh, we can uh, really uh, achieve nice returns without a, a, a lot of leverage, but with a, a huge emphasis on the transformation of the companies. Wow, that's really a, a clear motto and also philosophy from complexity to simplicity. And uh, you mentioned then also uh, the SMEs. What are the core sectors you are specifically monitoring or investing in? Are there any specific deals, recent ones, you would like to highlight in this regard? Uh, we, are, we are sector agnostic. Huh? Uh, uh, we exclude real estate, gambling, but, but basically we are, we are generalists. Uh, however, uh, we perform uh, transactions uh, in different sectors, uh, software, 
professional services, uh, healthcare, and, and logistics. Um, and uh, I can provide recent uh, examples, for example, EPC, so uh, rather complex because it's, uh, EPC is a listed company, so uh, in France, all in, so uh, in financials, uh, as well as Sicura, which is uh, uh, proposing services in Italy around the fire safety. So rather large uh, in terms of sector, in terms of experiences. Wow. And in order to handle such deals, what can you tell us about the Argos setup? Where are your main offices and how many persons to work for Argos globally? I think it's an excellent question. And I, I think that it's really something really different in our organization. We are, uh, we are 50 uh, uh, people uh, on which you have uh, uh, more than 30 professionals. And if you look uh, the number of deals or company uh, in our portfolio, a number of people, uh, we have two uh, professionals for each single uh, company. And uh, uh, why? Easy to explain. That's uh, uh, to transform the company. Uh, you need really uh, uh, a lot of manpower uh, in during the, the, the holding period. Uh, in terms of footprint, uh, as already explained, uh, six offices covering eight countries. Our fund is uh, now registered in Luxembourg with the French uh, IEFM. You mentioned Luxembourg and also the French IEFM. What about your Luxembourg presence and uh, which operating model do you use here? And finally, what's the composition of your local team? Now, as you know, uh, we are moving from uh, a French Jersey situation to the Luxembourg. So we didn't do a full uh, uh, Luxembourg uh, fund. I mentioned the, the French IFM, so we don't need to be uh, IFM at the level of Luxembourg. So today uh, we have an holding company uh, and with uh, two professionals. Uh, and uh, uh, most of our funds, uh, GPs, are also located in Luxembourg as well as a number of uh, dedicated SPV in order to structure our uh, underlying. And uh, in such a configuration, do you think that also globally in Luxembourg, we could find more front office roles since you have a large experience, including then Switzerland, Belgium and France. Uh, for example, uh, investor relations or fundraising activities, would those make sense in Luxembourg? Hello. We, we were in a rather complex situation with uh, 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 back office here and there. Uh, I mentioned Paris uh, for the uh, AFM. Uh, then we are clearly moving to Luxembourg. Uh, and I, I think that it's a, a question of time uh, where we will see our Luxembourg office growing and probably uh, uh, integrating some of the, uh, uh, let's say, services that you uh, just mentioned, IR and other stuff like that. Yes, it's, because a nice, we are always... it's, it's a nice phase out of, let's say, uh, the existing uh, of the existing situations to a new world where Luxembourg will, will clearly play a, a, a very important role. Great, thank you, Gilles, because uh, we always look for new opportunities, how we could further develop the Luxembourg ecosystem. And those could be, for example, uh, interesting examples such. Uh, Last year, complicated year, I think, for everybody. I mean, many digitalized or discovered those uh, technologies. What happened at Argos in 2020? Ah, the fact that uh, we are, uh, myself, uh, but also, uh, also uh, some of our uh, partners quite old, uh, means that we, we, we knew uh, what, let's say, a, a crisis uh, is uh, can damage uh, companies and uh, for the people who were there during the year 2008 year 2009 i think that uh, uh, every expert in private equity uh, has probably uh, reached uh, 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 and, and 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 let's say by by the experience uh, as uh, grown is a, a learning curve so uh, when we when we saw and honestly uh, uh, thanks to our uh, expertise and also uh, some of our companies were based in China, uh, we knew that something was coming. So immediately, uh, I think that we, we, uh, uh, we took very seriously the, the, the first wave of the COVID-19 in, in Q1 uh, 2023, and we tried to support 
our management team and, and the businesses they run. Uh, so uh, 2020 was really um, very hands-on uh, to protect the human capital of our uh, uh, companies, portfolio companies, uh, uh, and as well uh, as their liquidity positioning. And what is really interesting when you look at the European scale, you will see that uh, countries uh, uh, react very differently. So France is probably the most, uh, let's say, quick uh, and, uh, in, in their reactions. And they provide a lot of uh, uh, PGE uh, uh, loans to, to companies. They were very uh, nice to have, where other uh, countries are, let's say, much more demanding, so uh, uh, for example, uh, Belgium, Netherlands, and, and, and Italy. So uh, we face different situations in different countries. Honestly, no major issue in our portfolio across Europe, uh, which also confirming uh, our reasonable approach toward financial leverage, because uh, we are not fan, uh, as I said previously, we are not fan about leverage. In, in average, we have 2.5 times EBITDA as debt. So, uh, and and uh, it's very uh, helpful when you are managing such crisis. You are not thinking about uh, breaking, a, uh, let's say, a ratio uh, and so on. And, and we were really concentrated uh, to uh, manage the different different situations. Uh, and by the way, we are also. Uh, simultaneously started the, the launch of uh, our fund uh, eight with a target size of uh, 650 million euros. Congratulations, that's what you call resilience. And uh, I also liked your anecdote of different countries being more generous than others, where there, for example, survival is uh, how you, are, you have done your setup and how you're able also to become agile and react to it. But for experts of complexity, as, as you said, this was something well, well planned then. Uh, it's it's a, it's a, uh, uh, it's a very interesting uh, period. Uh, it's not finished, to, to be honest with you, uh, because uh, we will see uh, what's coming next uh, after, uh, uh, let's say, the, the, the this fantastic, uh, let's say, reopenings uh, into brackets, and 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 what come next. Uh, that's very difficult to to see because uh, today everybody is uh, really excited, optimistic on the short term what comes next on the medium and long term we will see but anyway uh, we are ready <laughs> nice and um, ESG sustainable finance really increasing continuously increasing trends what about that uh, how has Argos defined its policy or strategy how active are you already well I think that's more a part of the uh, of the COVID which is a massive uh, disruption I think that there were two uh, two uh, uh, interesting elements on the beginning of 2021. The first one is demography in China. So uh, uh, we, are, we have all in mind that uh, uh, we are, uh, let's say, growing, uh, let's say, a growing population everywhere and we reach uh, 14 million, 40 billion, sorry, inhabitants, which is not uh, uh, anymore the case, uh, particularly uh, when you see a, a decrease in China, in Italy or other nations. And the second element, uh, for me is, is a different, uh, let's say, uh, decisions taken by uh, court. And for example, uh, the, the, in Netherlands, uh, the, the court uh, which has condemned uh, Shell to reduce massively uh, its, uh, its carbon footprint by 45% between now and 230. And this is, is really, uh, for me, uh, a reveal that it's not only let's say, uh, the flavor of the, let's say, years uh, or decades, because uh, uh, we know that ESG is now very important. But to be honest, uh, if I have to, uh, to categorize the ESG, it's more a top-down approach, uh, coming from very large investors uh, very, uh, uh, under the pressure of, of stakeholders. And I really believe uh, the total uh, 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 opposite way, which is for me uh, um, a, a bottom up. A bottom up means uh, in our organization to see. First of all, uh, we, we uh, didn't uh, hire any ESG specialist, but we think that uh, ESG should be shared by uh, some of our people internally, and particularly uh, around me, uh, uh, because I'm our, our 
are, let's say, in charge of the H program. We have involved uh, four other people. So uh, one uh, investment manager, so uh, Arnie uh, Louvagui in, in, uh, in Belgium with me, uh, but also Olivier de la Guerronnière, so who is our general secretary in Luxembourg, the head of communication, because we have also to communicate uh, more and more, and, and also uh, our uh, compliance associate, uh, Lilia Kadri. So, that's the first level. The second level is uh, at the level of the portfolio companies. And really what we what we are asking is not to, uh, let's say, impose any uh, ESG program, but really to help each portfolio, portfolio company to uh, develop uh, actions and KPI uh, at their level. And they should decide what sort of actions they want to run uh, for a, a medium term period. Uh, so we launched our uh, uh, internal policy and we have published uh, in 2021. Uh, on top of everything, we, we took the, the decisions to, uh, to uh, launch what we call the Friday initiative. So uh, we are uh, uh, giving two days per year uh, freely uh, to dedicate uh, for, for each, well, sorry, for each member of our group, uh, to each employee, to, to dedicate their time to uh, social activity or their choice. And, and uh, uh, their choice and, and uh, the action that they are taken will be uh, uh, discussed, at least uh, in, uh, in, in their uh, internal review, which happens in our organizations two times a year. Um, at the level of the portfolio company, uh, as I said, Systematically, we are doing pre-acquisition DD uh, due diligence uh, ESG, and, and uh, uh, by constructions, uh, we have uh, for each company to uh, let's say uh, um, uh, determine what actions and to report at the level of the board. So really, uh, and and uh, this is very interesting because uh, what is behind it also to promote some of the actions uh, uh, of uh, one specific portfolio company in order maybe to generalize the actions over our uh, European portfolio or uh, to uh, organize some beauty contests, uh, maybe uh, uh, attribute some uh, subventions or some money. Um, last but not least, uh, we took the decisions to uh, offset the carbon footprint. So uh, we, we did it uh, last year and this year. Uh, and uh, every year we are offsetting in um, uh, attributing the, the amount to one specific uh, company. So last year uh, we took the decision to attribute the money to the Good Planet Foundations, which is run by uh, Yann Atchers Bertrand, uh, the, the famous uh, photographer and director. This year, uh, we have attributed uh, the amount to uh, uh, a non-profit organization in Belgium, so NaturePont, uh, which will plant uh, 4,350 uh, square meters of new forest around uh, uh, Brussels. And next year, uh, Germany will decide uh, what sort of, uh, of uh, actions or uh, uh, non-profit organizations they will attribute uh, the offset. So it's quite, quite interesting, uh, quite large, uh, and uh, it's not finished. Huh? Where uh, for the moment we are working uh, on uh, specific topics, uh, and uh, for example, we will launch uh, an individual uh, questionnaire about ESG in general for each employee, for sure, uh, on an uh, anonymous basis, to understand uh, what they, uh, how they feel about ESG, uh, about inclusion, diversity, and so on. Lots of nice initiative. And I particularly like the one where you allow your colleagues and also staff to work uh, in parallel on a specific project. That really makes sense. Yes. Uh, on a more, yes, and we should all inspire ourselves. I see, I've seen fingers here in the studio and people telling me that they would also like to do the same. So you see, that's how you share great ideas. Thank you. <laughs> Concerning the more general now uh, private equity landscape, the ecosystem, uh, what's your view currently on, on our favorite industries? 
Anything specific you also see for Luxembourg, which could be further upgraded in the future? Well, you know more than me, but uh, honestly, if I have to summarize uh, your positions, uh, you are a very prosperous country uh, with a AAA. Uh, you have a skilled and multilingual uh, workforce. Uh, and for a French uh, citizen, a proven stable political environment, which is absolutely key uh, to, uh, to develop uh, private equity and the, and the ecosystem. Um, more center of Europe in, in terms of uh, geography. Uh, voilà. and, and the fact that you can easily uh, reach, uh, talk, exchange with the authorities is for me uh, 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 a very clear uh, positive component. Uh, I was, uh, as you, if you remember, I was the chairman of the French Association and we, we spent a lot of time to explain what is private equity, what is your interest to develop private equity in our country. And, and uh, uh, well, for Luxembourg, it's, it's an obvious uh, uh, strength that uh, um, uh, the uh, private equity ecosystem is uh, very large, uh, largely de developed. Indeed, we like the short and pragmatic ways. That completely makes sense. Yeah. Uh, now, more on a personal basis, Gilles, what did you study and where did you start your career? Uh, so, I'm a lawyer i have a lawyer background so i i started uh, um, i was uh, graduated by uh, a master at the paris 2 uh, assas plus uh, a DESS at paris 5 plus an institute droit comparé so uh, i was uh, perfectly uh, trained to become a lawyer and by the way uh, when i was uh, um, at paris 5 I, I studied with uh, two great uh, legal professional. One, uh, Xavier Jasper, uh, became uh, the top partner as uh, Mayor Brown in, uh, in the buyout uh, structuring activity. And the second one, Frédéric Dondieu de Vabre, uh, set up Taxon, so uh, probably one of the most successful, uh, uh, let's say, uh, tax and legal company uh, in France. So we were uh, all three uh, basically very entrepreneurs uh, but I'm the only one uh, who uh, chose uh, the, uh, the uh, private equity. Uh, so I start my career uh, as, as a trainee, uh, advocate trainee, uh, and then I join uh, a nonprofit organization called uh, ANCE, uh, which, is, which was the uh, Agence Nationale for la Création d'Entreprises. I set up the um, merger and acquisition department. So uh, in 1982, I set up the first, uh, organized uh, the first uh, um, event uh, conference on buyout in uh, 1984. So just a few months before the, uh, the reform called uh, RES, Reprise d'Entreprise par les Salariés, which was, a, a, let's say, the first uh, tax initiative uh, taken by the government to facilitate the, the, the merger and acquisitions. Uh, voilà. And basically, five years at Initiative Finance, so uh, I, we started with a, a very small uh, uh, FCPR uh, of 50 million French francs, so uh, around 9 million euros. And then we have transformed the company into a holding company listed in 87, super successful, when I quit uh, Initiative Finance, uh, I organized uh, or financed myself more than 23 buyouts in 1990. Uh, so it was a very good time, uh, fantastic period, uh, like all the pioneers uh, periods. Wow, again, very impressive and also all the time very entrepreneurial, always moving on. Uh, with, within such a context, any specific values uh, you personally appreciate and respect, I mean, either with your team, but also the target companies, etc. Well, to be, uh, I'm a boomer. So uh, boomer means a very old guy. Uh, and and uh, to be uh, very transparent to you, uh, what I like are the uh, bourgeois values. So, and basically, what are the bourgeois values? It's uh, work, uh, individual freedom, 
and a high sense of responsibility. So, uh, uh, voilà. So, uh, for sure, I, I love uh, also the team spirit uh, because when you set up uh, an organization uh, which is people business oriented, uh, you want to, to really uh, uh, infuse uh, team spirit. But, but let's say uh, I like the idea that uh, uh, the bourgeois values are, are, are still valuable. Great. And uh, any specific advice you would like to give to young talents who would like to enter the private equity industry and also work with us in the future? Now, there are, there are two different approaches. Uh, they are very, very different. The first one uh, is to say, guys, before uh, joining a private equity group, you should spend some time in the industry, uh, maybe a, a bank, m &A department, and so on, and then uh, it will be easier for you to penetrate uh, the private equity. I have a very different approach, which is uh, as soon as you can join the private equity. Uh, so, uh, and by the way, uh, I, I train uh, many of my partners uh, when they were very, very young. So Louis Gaudron joined Initiative Finance at the age of 20. Uh, Gilles Laurent, maybe 20 something, eight. Uh, Karel Popa, uh, just after uh, finishing his uh, MBA at HSA. So honestly, uh, depending on the, on the structure, but uh, uh, I like very much the idea that uh, as soon as you can, you join a private equity group. By the way, uh, uh, the other advice is uh, 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 LBO was fantastic, but I, I, I love uh, pioneering. Uh, I love to, to really uh, uh, develop businesses without any constraint, any, uh, let's say, uh, people who are touching your shoulder and say, uh, uh, guys, uh, you are not doing the right thing. So, uh, voilà, my, my, uh, my individual uh, freedom is absolutely key. So today, if I was uh, young, I will, be, I will enter into uh, a venture company because honestly, there are so many things to develop and 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 the, the other alternative which is rather common common complementary is esg because i i truly think that the esg is really opening uh, new horizons uh, and and also uh, sometimes uh, uh, reconciliating uh, money with values let's say like that well, very exciting. And also to end up, as you said, if you would start a new now, that you would kind of end up in the more venture capital oriented business, but it would still be very uh, entrepreneurial and certainly also contain then those either, either values or technology. Yeah, I think that uh, technology is a new horizon. Uh, every day we are, we are also facing uh, challenges huh? because uh, for the, the old people and the, let's say, uh, uh, old strategy, uh, we have to adapt our behavior to the, the new tech. It's exciting, but it's also challenging. Yes, and also why it's important to have a really strong UX designers helping out in order to make that use as simple as possible and effective. Absolutely. Uh, did any specific leader or person inspire, motivate you when you were younger, now, or whenever? Again, as a boomer, I will uh, uh, name people who are very, very old. So. Uh, General de Gaulle, <laughs> because he was also a guy who took a, 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 a very brave or bold decisions, and, and I like the idea to be uh, uh, against the mainstream, uh, and, and by the way, it's a fantastic uh, politician. So uh, Obama, uh, I love America. I had a house for a long time uh, in America, and I'm, I'm fan of the uh, this uh, very large country and, and uh, very happy to see uh, a new uh, uh, Democrat uh, president uh, after uh, four years of nightmare. Uh, and, and Obama, for me, is a perfect example of what uh, uh, United States is, is capable to do. So uh, this very uh, traditional, uh, sometimes uh, conservative uh, uh, country is able to elect uh, uh, um, African American guy. This is absolutely fantastic for for me. Uh, and the last one, which is also a little bit the same, uh, is is for sure Nelson Mandela, uh, because uh, a guy who really uh, uh, transform a company 
uh, with, uh, let's say, uh, without uh, taking any uh, vi violent actions. He's also uh, spending his time in prisons. Uh, is, a, is a fantastic example for, for the futures. Great names and uh, rest assured, Jill, I think that our audience and certainly community knows those uh, fabulous examples too. Charles de Gaulle, you could I even have cited GFK, <coughs> sure, no problem. And Obama, as you said, yes, that completely makes sense. Um, and on a, on a very light note, in order to finish also our interview, um, any great book, series or podcast or even music you would recommend to our audience? I mean, it can be business linked, but can also be on other, uh, I don't know, uh, hobbies you would have or passions. Oh, uh, you, you, I need uh, more than a half an hour uh, or a day to uh, explain uh, uh, what, uh, what are my hobbies because I have so many to be honest, outside of, of the uh, private equity, because I'm, I'm really passionate. First of all, in terms of books, uh, I re highly recommend uh, The Other Story, which is a Richard Powers uh, fiction book, which uh, um, won the, the Fiction's uh, Pulitzer Prize in year 2019. Uh, why? Because it's, it's talking about uh, trees. It's a st different story, but around the trees, and then uh, when you are reading the book, you are uh, uh, considering more or less that a book is a, is a person and, and not uh, uh, an object. So very interesting, uh, for sure, the, the last book of Obama. Uh, well, I, and last but not least, because uh, I have to do my own publicity, uh, a fantastic uh, book that you should buy. Huh? Uh, um, uh, everything you need uh, to know about private equity. Huh? By the way, uh, I, I'm very happy to, to, to publish this book with my uh, Luxembourg editor, uh, uh, Legitech. So, uh, and we are, uh, let's say, uh, publishing the next version in a, in a few weeks time, and also publish a new version of uh, the book in English, because uh, honestly, the, the first version was very poor. And we are doing a lot of efforts to be, uh, 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 let's say, uh, more clear uh, uh, and more detailed, not only in French, but also in English. Alors, the series. The series, again, uh, uh, I highly recommend, uh, I don't know if you are familiar with, the Kominsky Method. I don't know, uh, in Netflix, uh, why? Because uh, it's a Michael Douglas uh, who, uh, was uh, the, the, the most important role and, and the, uh, what's happening to him uh, because in the, in, the, in the movie, in the series, he has uh, uh, above 70 years old. Uh, it's a little bit refreshing for me, which is facing more or less the same issue. So uh, I love, uh, I love uh, the, the Kaminsky and that. In music, uh, so I'm fan of uh, every kind of music, but particularly the jazz. And we are, well, I'm a fan of jazz, and, and uh, uh, the two are, for me, the two uh, uh, great uh, singers uh, are Gregory Porter, so, uh, uh, and uh, his last record, Natin Cole and Me, is, is for me the top of the top. Natin Cole was also a, a fantastic uh, singer, uh, the first uh, African-American, uh, let's say, uh, recognized as a true singer in the in the 50s uh, and the second one is a, is a lady melody gardo with uh, his last record uh, sunset in the blue a very nice taste also here and next time we see each other in luxembourg or wherever else i mean we'd be very happy to fill our lpa library with then your book <laughs> and the signed version for sure <laughs> no problem i will be more than happy to dedicate uh, my book to uh, the uh, to your associations and uh, just before finishing i wanted to thank you Gilles, for sharing all those insights for taking the time also for all those great anecdotes we love this very entrepreneurial spirit that's great and also the no constraints part we listen to that see you soon again and we say goodbye thank you bye-bye